Hello, Cecil County and the world. This is Cecil.tv, Cecil Weekly, and I'm your host, Rob Churnside. We have a special show tonight with a guest from Rising Sun talking about the Sun Fest. We have a clip from the Ice Plunge down there at the Wellwood Yacht Club this past weekend, and we have our musical guest, Sam Anderson. And it's Mardi Gras, so laissez le bon ton roulé. Welcome, Vince Thank from you. Rising Sun. Thank you. You're going to talk to us about Sunfest. Yes, yes, I am. Great. It's when is it this year? Uh, it's going to be. It's always the first Saturday of June, and this year it'll be June third. Um, it'll start at 9 a.m. with a parade, and it'll end at four o'clock. All day. All day. What if it rains? I hate to say that. Well. Luckily, since I've been running, we haven't had any rain. However, if there is rain, it's rain or shine. So the show will go on. So you've got the mojo. Uh, somebody's got the mojo. I don't know if right, it's me, that's, that's but awesome. yeah, it's been, we've been pretty uh, lucky with that. And you're affiliated with the Chamber of Commerce of Rising Sun. Yes. Yeah, the Rising Sun Chamber of Commerce uh, puts us on every year and have been for 28 years. Well, it's a wonderful event. And I got to tell you, I really should make it this year because I've been living in Cecil County 30 years. And I haven't been yet, but I intend to come there and look for you. Okay, great. And my friends from One Eye Jacks who are going to be playing music, correct? That's correct. Uh, later in the afternoon, after the pie eating contest and the tug of war between the town and the chamber, uh, we're going to have the One Eye Jacks perform and, and see us out through the rest of the event. Now, the pie eating contest, is it quantity or timed? How does that work? Completion. <laughs> so, um, it's, it's epic, too, by the way. You guys really have to come out and see that. So, so we have different uh, levels of age that participate. And we have, for the little guys, we have the, the smaller uh, pies. And for the, you know, the grown-ups, we have larger pies. And the object is to not use your hands. And you have to stick your face in this pie. And they vary. You know, sometimes they're blueberry, blackberry, what, whatnot. And they have to stick their face right in the pie. And they have to complete eating the entire pie without um, hurling or any other type of excretions from their body in order to, to be the winner. And they do receive a medal for the pie eating contest at the end as well. I would think so. <laughs> yeah. That's an awesome accomplishment. <laughs> yeah. Well, that sounds like fun already. So tell us more about how Sun, Sun 28 years, right? This mm -hmm. will be the 29th year. Mm -hmm. And who was the, who started Sunfest, really? Well, um, uh, Norman Hunter, uh, originated the Sunfest because people used to call in the Rising Sun from Elkton and elsewhere in the county and never really knew where Rising Sun was. So the the business organization at the time, it wasn't called the Rising Sun Chamber, it was called the Rising Sun uh, Business Association or something like that. Uh, they wind up putting together uh, an event to try to bring people into the town so folks know where Rising Sun was. And every year they continue to carry on that tradition uh, to let people know where Rising Sun is. Well, good. I know where it is. You know where okay. it is. But I guess there are some people, even in Cecil County, who don't know where Rising Sun is. This is the guy who's going to tell you. And this is the guy, folks, if you have an act and you want to get involved, there's music, there's other kinds of acts, right? What else do we have? Yeah, um, we, we used to have a talent show that we try to perform, but it's kind of uh, ad hoc. It depends on how many people show up. So if we get enough participants to show up, we would probably do a talent uh, contest as well and give away prizes and whatnot for that as well. So Vince, people should contact you the sooner the better to line up for this rapidly filling up uh, Sunfest, That's right? correct, yes. We have a, a couple email addresses where we can be reached. Um, the, the easiest way is probably go to our, our website, which is sunfest.us, not .com, US. So it's sunfest.us. And it'll have everything about a parade. It'll have everything about the entertainment that's going to be there. And they have the real-time vendors. So whenever a vendor signs up, it's online instantly. So uh, check, check frequently to see if your favorite vendor's there. That and sounds great. And it'll be here before we know it. Yes. Anything else you want to add about Rising Sun, the Chamber, or Sunfest? Uh, yeah, we, we actually uh, expanded the event last year. We doubled our size. Uh, we get, had uh, access to another parking lot that's adjacent to the, the event arena. And uh, last year was probably the biggest ever because since we doubled our population as far as vendors that could participate. And we had quite a, quite a large crowd there. 
Uh, we're going to bone up on the bathrooms this year because, you know, we doubled our size and didn't really double the bathroom capacity. So we're doubling the bathroom capacity this year. Uh, so there's no lines for the, the bathrooms this year. But not like the old time Rising Sun Outhouse thing that used to happen, right? No. no, <laughs> no not like that. No. We'll get into that later. Yeah, that's another story. <laughs> it's great to have you here on Cecil Weekly. And Vince, we're looking forward to June 3rd, uh, Rising Sun Sunfest. And I know I myself, I'm going to start practicing eating those pies. <laughs> Thank you, you very much. You. Thank you. Hi, I'm Allison Donnelly for Cecil.TV. Today we're at the Wellwood Yacht Club in Charlestown, Maryland for the 2017 Ice Splash. The event is a fundraiser for the Cecil County Special Olympics and is sponsored by the Sons of the American Legion. Fearless Cecil Countyans are, are getting ready to plunge into the Northeast River despite the threatening weather in today's forecast, though it looks like we're in the clear for the next couple of hours. Splash time is set for 1 p.m and many brave souls are lining up to take the plunge. I'm here with Marcus Beavers, chairperson of the Cecil County Ice Splash for the Special Olympics. What are the origins of today's event? Um, this actually evolved about 15 years ago and um, it was solely for the purpose of raising money for Cecil County Special Olympics. And uh, it's just evolved back years ago. It was actually about 30 or 40 people and it's evolved to this today. So we just continue to support and raise money and have a good time. Hi, uh, what are you guys doing here today? Good morning, I'm Debbie Williams. I'm from Rising Sun and this is my friend Carissa Logano McCool. Um, she's from Earlville and her two sons, this is Colby and Gino. And we are here for the Ice Splash. We do an, uh, four times a year we do something special every season and we decided that swimming in the winter would be fun. <laughs> what brings you out to the 2017 Ice Splash? The Polar Bear Plunge Special Olympics Fundraiser. And what's your name? My name is Douglas Trapani and I live in Elkton, Maryland. Uh, we heard you saying that you're, you wish it were colder today. Yeah, you know, February, almost the end. Normally water is around 35. I mean, hopefully it's just a cycle and it pulls through, but Either way, it's good for a good cause for the people. Thank you. What's your name and where are you from? Hi, um, I'm Bill Reeder. I'm with the Susquehanna Host Company. This is a part of the uh, Susquehanna Host Company's dive team. Uh, okay. And what preparations are made to make sure everyone's safe today? Uh, we've been asked to come over and be like the safety personnel for, the, for this event. And we brought seven divers with us. They're all rescue divers. Uh, we'll have our equipment staged. But we'll form a line, and then we'll just keep everybody inside that line. Thank you. So we'll get up to about our chest, and that'll be as far as they go. Cool. Thank you very much. What's your name, and who are you splashing with today? My name is Dory Rutherford. This is my daughter, Brianna Rutherford. I work for the Northeast VFW Post 6027 and the Cecil Legion Post 15. Um, it was important to me, the VFW asked me to be the uh, team captain this year, and working for both, I could not say no. And I wanted my daughter to be proud of me, and I wanted her to see us apart in the mix when we ran in and be proud of Mommy and what she's doing. That's awesome. So that's how I uh, came up with the idea for us to stand apart, and I knew she'd love it. That's so cool. Thank you so much. Come here, everybody. My name is Emily Stewart, and we're splashing with um, Team Post 194 of the American Legion and Rising Sun. And why did you come out today? Um, we're just here to support um, the Cecil County Special Olympics and um, try to raise awareness for it. Awesome. Thank you.
because my Uncle Donald was a participant in Special Olympics. This is one of his medals. He passed away last year. So this is why I'm here and my sister's here. Why are you here? I know why Eunice is here. I know why most of you are here. But the biggest part of it is look down deep into your soul and ask yourself, I'm not here to party. Well, I might have a good time while I'm here, but I'm here because of a cause. We want to make sure that our special athletes, whether they're five or 35 or 85, have the opportunity to do these kinds of things. So that's why we're here, to come together as a community and do these things. So thank you to everyone who's here today. We appreciate it so, so very, very much. Amazing. What's your name and why are you here today? Uh, Paul Kanis. I'm a judge advocate of Post 6027, VFW Post in Northeast Maryland. And we're here, we dedicated money uh, to the Special Olympics. And we do a lot of, as far as Cecil County, and a lot of uh, civic programs that we donate money that we generate and it goes back to the community. And why do you think this is an important event? Oh my God, it's one of these things that these folks been doing this for a number of years and we've been on board with it. And But again, it's such a nice thing that happens to these folks that are disabled and be able to help them with their, all their programs. Thank you so much. Okay. From Charlestown, this is Allison Donnelly for Cecil.TV. We are now in for a special treat. We're going to get the mojo working <laughs> with our guest, Sam Anderson, musician, teacher, renaissance man. Sam, Rob, welcome. how are you doing? I'm doing fine. I don't even want to know where you got that from. From Louisiana, <laughs> Sparty Gras. It now, is, it is. And that ties in perfectly with your music. Tell us about your music, Sam. Well, I've been playing guitar since I was 13, and I'm really, really old now, so uh, that's been quite a long time. Uh, Play guitar, write songs, sing. I perform in a local cover band. Uh, I teach guitar at Bender at the Bender School of Music on 272 Mackle Street. So um, that's pretty much what I do. In Elkton. Yes, Bender, sir. Bender 272 Mackle Street, the old Buckworth Market, right at the corner of uh, Mackle and Landing Lane. 272 Mackle Street. And that was a great music store. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. it closed down, but the, the school is still there. We still, we still have lessons there. We still teach uh, guitar. We still teach vocal, keyboards, brass, uh, violin, cello. There are lots of cello openings right now, so if there are any cello players out there who are looking for lessons, we've got, we've got a lot of slots available. So we're doing, we're doing well. Um, we're, we're getting a lot more students. Uh, we're going to have a... Um, uh, swap meet March 18th. So if you've got gear that you're interested in trading, we're going to be doing it there. We're going to have a spring recital the first weekend in May. So we're trying to do a lot of really great things at, at, at the Bender School of Music. That swap meet sounds great. The last one got snowed out, right? Um, no, we were still there. We just didn't have as many people as we, we thought. And, and, you know, I know a lot of guys who have a lot of gear that want to sell it and or are looking to see what else is out there. And so it's a great place to network. Invariably, somebody's going to pull out a guitar and we're going to start jamming away and singing some songs and making fools of ourselves and other things that are fun. That sounds great. And your cover band is Plan B? Plan B, yeah. Um, we do a lot of oldie stuff from the 50s up to probably about the 70s or so. Um, we just played The Grain in Newark and um, we're... I was there. It was great. That's I had right. A great you time. were there. You were the there. The food was good. And it's a great I place. I enjoyed the music. Yeah. So. One thing, Sam, um, I've been wondering about. I know you do that Shel Silverstein tune. Marie. Marie Laveau. Yeah, love that tune. You're gonna do it next time I see you. Okay. I want to. I want to hear it. You're not doing it tonight because it. No, no. You're no. doing original tunes tonight. So. I have an original tune uh, for you, and I also have uh, a uh, tune written by W. C. Handy, uh, who's the fellow that they refer to as the father of the blues. He was the guy who took blues music from its regional folk roots and made it part of our popular American culture. And you actually presented on WC Handy at the library last Tuesday, correct? I did, I did. I, they had contacted the Bender School of Music asking if someone could do something on the blues, and they, I, when they go, blues, that guy right there. And so I just, okay, you know, and they said, well, what do you want to do? Um, well, WC Handy's a good place to start. And, and so I did a lot of research so that I could have something to say, and I, I learned a lot of really great stuff. 
So just so our viewers will know, W.C. Handy was around about what time? Let's see, he was, uh, from, he was born in the late 1870s and he lived until 1958. Um, his, he was, things like the St. Louis Blues, the Memphis Blues, uh, Loveless Love, songs like that that went on to influence people like the Gershwins. Um, you know, like if you hear the opening to uh, Rhapsody in Blue, that clarinet exists because W.C. Handy said, let's take this note, you know, like this note is part of uh, blues culture, this bend, this slur, yeah. and let's make it part of popular culture. I can hear it right now. Absolutely. And I'm looking forward to hearing your music tonight. Anything else you want to share with us? Um, just uh, if you're looking for guitar lessons, uh, vocal lessons, bass lessons, uh, brass or woodwind, uh, 272 Mackle Street, 3920929. That's 3920929. On the screen. Call. And let's hear some music, Sam. Thank yes, you sir. so much. Thank you. Ever since Miss Susie Johnson lost her jockey league, there's been much excitement and more to be. You can hear her moaning, moaning night and dawn. Wondering where her easy rider is gone. Cablegrams that go out in inquiry, telegrams that come back in sympathy, letters down in BAM, everywhere that Uncle Sam, he's the ruler Beside the Pullman car Well I seen him there And he was on the hall I say oh he's a rider Got to stay away Well I heard he had to vamp it but it's not so hard He's gone down south Where they cross the yellow dog All right. This is the original one. A story about my grandfather and his dealings with uh, some people. Granddad had a Chevrolet, 1952. Got a used transmission for it on Green Spring Avenue. Man said it was good as gold, it would treat him right. When he hooked it up, it sounded like two squirrels that had a fight. Walked it back up on his porch. Knocked upon the door Man walked out, yelled What the hell you bothering me for? Granddad said this thing don't work You best make it right or You and I will have ourselves Just one hell of a fight Go on, hillbilly I ain't got time for you If it don't have a bit in range You don't know what to do Behind the plow 
Granddad said your word ain't good. That's a simple fact. I paid good money for this. Now I want my money back. Man said I don't give a damn just what you want from me. You just an old hillbilly about as dumb as you can be. Go on, hillbilly. I ain't got time for you. If it don't have a bit in range, you don't know what to do. Go on, hillbilly. Best get out of here now. Leave that car alone and get your ass behind the plow. Granddad dropped a hundred pounds of steel without a sound. It crashed right through his front porch and it landed on the ground. I may not get my money back, that I plainly see. But ain't no way this piece of shit is going home with me. Go on, hillbilly, that's what I get from you. But I won't be the only one with extra work to do. Go on, hillbilly, I bid you a farewell. I'll head back to Butler and your ass can go to hell. I said I'll head back to Butler and your ass can go to hell. We end this installment of Cecil Weekly with a follow-up to an interview we did with Ashley Dickens York of Project Prom. Cecil.tv's Sequoia Kennedy visited the Project Prom event this past Saturday and came back with this great piece. Thank you. 